Welcome to our time of reflection and indeed stillness in the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Before we begin our time of reflection, I would like to extend my very best wishes for this new year to all those who are joining us this evening. I pray that it will be a year in which we are all blessed, enriched, and indeed encouraged. As we journey forward, we pray for that constant healing and renewal. Let us begin this evening just by asking God's grace and blessing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We have just begun to really savour the essence of the Christmas season, celebrating, of course, the birth of Christ in Bethlehem while looking forward ultimately to the second coming of Christ at the end of time. But this season fills us with a sense of new hope, new joy, a joy that is ever young. We are privileged that God has become like us in all things but sin. And how Jesus came in such an unassuming manner and in a way that was quite unexpected. His presence gives us a new sense of direction, a new sense of vision, a new sense of interior peace. Let us take a little time just to take stock today, as we call to mind all those that we carry in our own minds and hearts. And we also remember all the issues of our modern day world, all the complexities, all the knots that need unfolding and unfurling. Let's maybe call to mind all these issues, not forgetting, of course, the goodness, the kindness, the presence of Christ in so many. Those who bring hope, who bring a new sense of healing and new life. I would like to 
take a reading from today's Gospel. And the Gospel comes from that of Saint John. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things came to be. Not one thing had its being but through him. All that came to be had life in them. And that life was the light of men. A light that shines in the dark. A light that darkness could not overpower. The Word was the true light. He was in the world that had its being through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own domain, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God. To all who believe in the name of him, who is born not out of human stock or urge of the flesh or will of man, but of God himself. The Word was made flesh. He lived among us, and we saw his glory, the glory that is his, as the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. This wonderful event of God, the God of surprises, stepping into history and changing the course of that history, just fills us with a sense of wonderment and awe. The Word was made flesh. Isn't it good to know that Jesus understands our ups and downs, our difficulties, our shortcomings? He understands our successes, those moments of light and hope, moments of forgiveness, healing in itself. Isn't it good to know that Jesus fully appreciates what we go through. Sometimes it's necessary for us to simply and yet wholeheartedly hand over to Jesus all that we do go through and weave him very much into the journey of our lives. Recently we had the funeral requiem for Archbishop Desmond Tutu, a formidable light and influence in South Africa. A man, right up until his 90th year, who continued to advocate for justice, equality, and a society that would reflect a good moral standard. A man of vision, a humble man, with an amazing smile that was both captivating and also so reinvigorating. This was a man of faith, and that faith was the wellspring that motivated him. The President of South Africa speaks highly of a man who brought great change over many decades, sometimes standing with the oppressed, sometimes being open to criticism and ridicule, wounded, a wounded healer, you might say. But he brought a new sense 
of direction, a new interpretation of life. And all of this was because he leaned very heavily on the word made flesh. This relationship with Jesus was both deep and effective. And how Jesus worked through this man of faith to bring about change. For the people of South Africa, while they mourn one of their own who was enigmatic and such a wonderful influence in society, they nevertheless will continue to reap from the seeds that he has sown of justice, equality and war besides. A force for change, but rooted rooted in Christ, his foundation, his all. As we journey in these days of the new year, we are only too well aware of the brokenness of the world, and yet its wonderful, awe-inspiring beauty. We reflect on those who experience that sense of injustice and inequality, the brokenness, the fractures of the world. And yet all of us can play our part as a community of faith to make a difference. It's within that context that the greatest change can be made truly effective. The Word was made flesh and lived among us. So this evening we remember all those who are indeed unwell on so many different levels. And I include our world, our homeland, within this prayer too. Let's pause a little moment this evening as I sing a little Basque carol, since we are still in the Christmas season and are called to continue to savour this season. But let it speak to our hearts. Let us truly ponder on the wonder of Christ's birth. The angel Gabriel from heaven came, his wings as drifted snow, his eyes as flame. All hail, said he, thou Lord, he made an Most highly favoured lady, Gloria. Then gentle Mary meekly bowed her head to me be as it pleaseth God, she said, my soul shall lord and magnify his holy name, most highly favoured lady, glory. Of her, Emmanuel, the Christ was born in Bethlehem all on a Christmas morn, and Christian folk throughout the world will ever say, most highly. Favored Lady, Gloria. 
So let us, in the presence of the risen Christ in the Eucharist, as we come before Christ, hand over those who are broken, perhaps as a result of illness or mental illness of any kind, we place them all before the healing Jesus. Healing is needed in so many different facets of life. If we are open to being healed ourselves, then there is the possibility of becoming healers in turn. The Word was made flesh and lived among us. So we place all those who at present are unwell. We remember all those who are in hospital at this time, those who are in hospices, housebound, those who live alone at home or with family. We include all our sick. We remember those who struggle with addictions of any kind, those who have taken that first significant and life-changing step to bring about change. We all know someone who is undergoing great difficulty, those interior storms of life. Let's perhaps name them as we place them before Jesus this evening. pray too for those who care for the sick. I know there are many who carry out a wonderful sense of vocation and care and love in our hospitals and hospices and at home. We think of carers in the community and those who care for residents and nursing homes and more besides. We thank you Lord for all those who are at the front line, particularly in these days. Bless all their endeavours. Keep them safe as they tend to the sick. There are some prayers that I would like to pray which are representative of all the sick this evening. We pray for the complete healing of Rosanna as she is going through some physical and indeed emotional distress. We pray for John to receive speedy recovery from a stroke. We also pray for the healing of Ach Amma's mother from all physical ailments. We pray too for the complete recovery of Ryan, who had a brain aneurysm and indeed for the Lord's blessings on his entire family. We pray for the successful brain surgery and speedy recovery of Busiswa as well. We remember all those that we carry in our hearts, those in our parishes, those beyond our parishes. We ask you, Lord, to surround them with your love 
and those who care for them, and to grant them healing in every possible way. We thank you also for the significant healing that is given by those who are sick. Through their own sense of courage, belief, their sense of interior hope and great faith. We place them all in your loving and tender care. Let us spend a little moment as we honour Jesus, the same Jesus born in Bethlehem who changed the lives of so many through that sacred mission that he carried out based on and built on love and the mission of his Father. We are all caught up in this mission. We pray too for our homeland, for the beautiful world in which we live. We pray for a melting of hearts, a dialogue of reconciliation across nations, a fairer distribution of resources and a uniting together to make this world a different place. But we are thankful for the goodness, the love, those moments when people's lives have been turned around and changed out of faith, out of presence, out of hope, out of just being there with people. Lord, we thank you for all the modern day prophets in our own lives. And once again, we commend our sick in all its forms, all the sick, into your loving care. Strengthen their resolve, grant them your peace. Help them to heal. And may this new year be a year in which we journey in hope with you within us. We adore you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your love. We implore you to journey with us to sustain us. You never give up on us, but always look out for us. We just take a little moment this evening and approach Jesus once again. The Word was made flesh. We ask Jesus just to take all our prayers this evening on to himself. I'd just like to sing one little verse of Silent Night. Let's approach Jesus as we reflect in this Christmas tide and hand over all those who are unwell. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy so tender and mild. 
dear Jesus, we thank you. Grant us your healing. We thank you for the healing that has taken place in people's lives. Help us to be open to your healing so that we may bring the healing touch of your love, your grace into other people's lives. Save us, Lord, while we are awake. Protect us while we sleep. That we may keep watch with Christ and rest with him in peace. our mother, lead us all close to Christ and wrap the mantle of her love around the sick across the world. Through her intercession, may the sick be healed, renewed and strengthened and those who care for them. End our time of reflection in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.